In this video, I'm going to go over how I made this custom G.I. Joe C-130 airplane. I'm going to show how I widened it to allow vehicles to get on board, created an infantry seating area, detailed the cockpit, and then painted it and added stickers to make it feel like a Joe vehicle. In the comic book, G.I. Joe had a great transport plane that they'd use to get themselves and their vehicles to all different places around the world. Usually it was flown by Wild Bill, it had four prop engines and a ramp in the back. And for all intents and purposes, it was a C-130, one of the most well-known transport aircraft ever built. But Hasbro, for some reason, never made a C-130 for G.I. Joe. None of the aircraft the Joes had were vehicle transports, unless you hung a vamp from a rope under one of the helicopters. And so I've always wanted a large air transport toy that could get my Joes and their gear to different missions. It turns out that there's a fantastic Joe scale C-130 toy called the Shark. You can pick one up at Target for $50, and my wife bought me one for Christmas. But it isn't perfect. The Shark's biggest flaw is the narrow ramp that won't fit Joe vehicles. I'd seen people do custom paint jobs on this toy, but nothing to correct this flaw. So I decided I'd try making a fix. The first thing I did was disassemble the aircraft, and because it was screwed together, this was pretty easy. I took it apart, um, kind of moved the pieces apart, put a Wolverine body in there to see how much I'd have to widen it to get a vehicle in there. You know, starting to think about like what the plan is, what I wanted to do. I also removed the electronics and that left a big void in the hull. And that turned out to be like something I thought I could use. You know, and looking at the height of things, started to shave pieces off like connectors and supports and things I didn't need. At this point, I knew I wanted to put a troop kind of seating area right behind where the cockpit is because of that that vacant area that was left when the electronics were removed so i started to cut that area out and sand that off and kind of think about like how much i could fit in there and at the same time i was looking at how how wide i had to keep the pieces um the different sides of the hull so that i could fit the wolverine and the awe striker and um, vamp and things like that into it and so that meant cutting away the hatch as wide as it would go where the ramp goes and then also slicing up the ramp so that I could kind of pull it apart. This is where the, the flexible plastic was useful. I found that I could like stretch the plastic if I cut it and it would just sort of bend but I didn't have to cut it into separate pieces so I could kind of stretch it and then my plan was to fill in the the gaps that were created with styrene and sort of finish that off uh, this is a deburring tool i never used this before but it helped me clean up the edges that i cut in the plastic using a dremel so the dremel is the main tool i used for cutting and then i'd go back with this deburring tool and kind of clean up everything once i settled on the width i needed i ended up just using the screws to keep the distance between the two parts of the hull I just kind of screwed the one screw in and didn't screw the other side all the way in and the screw held the gap perfectly. So at this point it was time to start um, filling some of those gaps with styrene. So I was using one mil and two mil thick styrene which you can just get on Amazon or at a hobby store. And so what I'm doing is just taking a ruler like a straight edge and an X-Acto knife and scoring the, uh, the styrene. Here I'm using a, a thicker uh, box cutter to cut the thicker styrene. And then again, you just kind of get a score line. You know, sometimes it's tricky. And then what's cool is it kind of just snaps off. You just kind of bend it and it'll break off and it leaves a really nice edge. And here's my trusty hot glue gun. I love that thing. And so I'm just using that to start putting some of the styrene in place and also to glue on some of the parts of the side of the hull onto the ramp. So I wanted to keep that shape that they'd all recreated with the toy. And so the pieces I cut off, I kept, and then I hot glued onto the ramp. You can see there how when you raise up the ramp, it kind of fits in right with the hull, which is, is great. That's what you want to see. You know, when it's closed, it looks, uh, looks nice. And then when it's open, it's got that width. At this point, I'm really just starting to detail things. I've got most of the pieces in place, and I just need to take more styrene and kind of go around the edges and hide some of the rough the rough edges, you know, places where there are rough cuts or, you know, maybe not a straight line and kind of use the styrene to, to square things off and make it look detailed, but try to blend it in. Here you can see the gap that I left in the bottom and how those screws are acting to keep the two parts of the hull, you know, um, not touching and give me that extra room so the vehicles can fit in there. And then I'm just using small little pieces of styrene 
and cutting those and just gluing them in place to kind of fill in that gap. And then what I ended up doing later, I don't know if I have pictures of this, but um, I just used Tamiya putty to kind of smooth those out and sand it. So the, the bottom of the hole in the end looks really good. And here you can see the cockpit of the shark. It's really bare bones. There's not much there. So I had to build up some scratch built, you know, sort of like controls and a little console and stuff like that, just so it felt more in scale and felt like the pilot, you know, and while Bill's up there, he's got something to do. And I feel like that adds a lot to the, uh, the design. Here's the troop transport seating area. Um, I just put a couple benches in there, made a styrene, and I think that works real well. It's pretty bare bones, but it lets you see around four figures in there and throw their gear in there. It gives them a place to hang out when they're transporting vehicles. And then this top hatch, I added some styrene just to close off where the, um, the electronics box used to be. And here's some shots where you can see how the styrene kind of cleans up the edges. You know, some are still a little bit rough, and I think I hit those with the putty. Um, but that's just grabbing some Tamiya putty, just putting it on your finger and kind of smoothing things off the edges and, you know, where seams and gaps are. And so next was hitting this with some paint. So I just got some green, kind of army-looking green paint and just sprayed it out in the yard, and the plastic took it really well. Um, it really brought everything together. It covers up all that styrene, and all the hard work kind of pays off at that point. The last step is the stickers. I just made mostly my own on, um, you know, just through Photoshop and printing things off. And then once you add those, it really just makes it pop and brings everything together. It makes it feel like a G.I. Joe vehicle. While Bill were approaching the landing site. Right you are, Doc. Better get things buttoned up and prepare to land. Final approach. Everyone prepare for landing. We're going in. It's looking good, Wild Bill. Looks like the field is clear. This C-130 sure is a workhorse. Gotta love her. All right, Joe, it's prepared to disembark. Landing ramp going down. Infantry, we're using the side door. Heavy armored vehicles, go out the back. Go, 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 go. Let's do this. I'm really excited with how this came out. It was a bit of work, but I think it was well worth it. The color and the stickers and the paint really make it feel like a G.I. Joe vehicle. Like this is the vehicle that Hasbro should have given us to fly our Joes around on the playground. And now I can set up a group of Joes like this with a mini Mauler rocket launcher, a couple of Ram cycles and a dozen or so Joes all outfitted for battle. We really hope you liked the video and that you liked the way the G.I. Joe C-130 turned out. We'll see you in the next video. And yo, Joe.